the studios of WFN in New York and simulcast across the country via the Yes Network. This is Mike Zahn, Francesa on the fan as we begin a new year on this January the 2nd, a Wednesday. I hope everybody had a nice holiday as we kind of get ready to move into the new year and kind of take a look, put the holidays behind us, you know, uh, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and now we can uh, look at all the stuff that's going on. And obviously, we went through Black Monday, and we haven't had a chance to comment yet. We will get to all the bowls today. We'll also do both Eli Manning and Victor Cruz today. So you will hear from them as we will kind of put the finishing touch on the football giants who went out with a win, but obviously not enough to get a chance to defend their crown this year. And then there's the Jets, the suddenly silent Jets, who on Monday followed the time-honored practice of throw one to the alligators so they don't eat you. And the one thrown was Mike Tannenbaum. And so the Jets are left now searching for a GM and with a formally boastful, blustery coach who has gone into the witness protection program, either by design, either at the owner's behest, or because, frankly, what's he going to say? Because everything he did turned into an utter disaster, and he watched Mr. T take the hit. And last week I told you, folks, the way you looked at this, the functional way to handle this, was to either allow the Mr. T. Rex team to go forward or to blow the whole thing up. But remember, you're dealing with the Jets here. You're dealing with Woody Johnson here, which means nothing functional is ever going to happen. So after two seasons of complete mistakes, two seasons of bad personnel moves, bad coaching, complete disloyalty on the staff, complete chaos in the locker room and just utter chaos throughout the organization, which has now left them a long way from where they were two years ago. What you have now is a completely dysfunctional jet team once again, because the idea that you're going to go now, have a search for a general manager who is going to come in here, who didn't hire the head coach. And if you look, it never works. Because he has a plan that is in no way in lockstep with Rex Ryan's plan. Rex Ryan's plan as he goes forward. And we will learn a lot about exactly what went on here by how Rex administers his staff as he goes forward. Rex is going to hiding here because he knows that basically he allowed Mr. T to take the complete hit for his failures. Because there's not one move that was made here. In the Mr. T. Rex four years, not one move that Rex Ryan did not okay, approve, or force. Not one move. They were in tandem the entire time. And remember, this is a head coach who, when this season started, said, this is my most talented team. So you got from him his, his personnel vision of what he thought the personnel. Later in the year... He had guys either doing it for him or with him in concert. And I don't know which one that is because I can't tell that. But the personnel was being assassinated from inside his staff. And Mr. T was taking a hit for the personnel that Rex had approved every single personnel move and had said as camp broke, this is my most talented team. He also said that Sperano is just like me, which I guess he meant clueless because that's what they both were. Because the offense that they put forth this year, the way they orchestrated their quarterback situation from bringing Tebow in to their misuse of the quarterbacks to the way they couldn't even figure out which quarterbacks to dress to their game prep to the way that down the stretch against a weak schedule, they couldn't even win a game in the last three weeks. Against a terrible schedule, they couldn't win a game. The idea that Rex is still breathing as a head coach is an amazing thing. Because there's no way he wasn't at least equally, and I would attest more than 50% of the problem the last two years. 
because his personnel decisions have been awful. His coaching decisions have been awful. His disconnect with the offense and with the development of quarterbacks has been past awful. It hasn't even been NFL worthy. And for Rex Ryan, who worked in concert, go back to the glory days for the Jets, go back to their HBO stuff, their glory days when they were pounding their chest and they were the toughest guys and the best guys and the smartest guys in the league. Remember those days? Before Rex turned into Rich Kotite? Back in those days, it was Mr. T and me. We're a tandem. We're a team. Anyone wants to play for us, I can coach anybody. We're smarter than everybody. We're tougher than everybody. We got it all figured out. That coach not only lost his courage in recent weeks, that coach now goes into hiding when his partner takes the hit and not a word from Rex Ryan about Mike Tannenbaum. Not a word. Not one word. What move did Mr. T make that Rex didn't put his stamp on? Rex wanted Sanchez. Rex wanted Sperano. Rex was involved on Tebow. What move, not one, did Mr. T make that Rex did not either bless or be right there with or push for? If Mr. T had an issue here, if he had a mistake that he probably would have to look back on and try to correct, it's that he allowed his head coach too much say in personnel. This is Rex Ryan's mess as much as it's Mr. T's mess. And I'm not saying it's not Mr. T's mess. It is. He took the hit. Why didn't the head coach? Why? Because the campaign that they ran the last six weeks, which completely undermined the quarterbacks, the offensive personnel, the poor, poor overmatched offensive coordinator who's about to bite the dust here any day, the guys who... Talked about how the defense had to live with the offense despite the fact they never got a big three and out or got a big play in their lives. And there's some guys on that defense who played well this year. Wilkerson, Cromartie, both safeties. Those guys, they can look in the mirror. But when you have a staff that leaks like that, the only question left is we know the staff leaks. We know that they threw the offense under the bus, Sperano under the bus, and Mr. T under the bus. The only question now is, did the assistants do it with Rex's approval or not? That's the only thing we don't know. And we'll know that if those guys come back, because then they did it with his approval. So then this was just a campaign. And there's a very good chance that was the case. The bottom line is, for Rex Ryan, with all his bluster and everything that he's put forth here, which we all know now is a phony act, because when it got tough, he wasn't tough. And when it got tough, we watched him quiver in these press conferences and uh, uh, you know, you know, just sit there and mumble and bumble his way through press conferences at the worst level we've seen in this town forever. And then for him to cancel a press conference on Monday after Mr. T gets fired and not say one word in his behalf is one of the gutless things I've ever seen in this town. And he can look in the mirror and answer to that. And I said, hey, listen, I tried to tell the Jets Monday, I'm going to say these things about the Jets on Wednesday. If the owner wants to come on, if Rex wants to come on, they come in the studio, they can have the floor. They're not going to talk. They have nothing to say. Their silence, their actions speak volumes. The owner's allowed to be angry. He's the owner. He's allowed to fire anybody he wants. He's the owner. He don't know what he's doing, but we know that. But he owns the team. There's a lot of owners that don't know what they're doing. We understand that. And someone, somehow, either Rex had his ear, or somehow he bought the campaign that was built up to make it a personnel issue and somehow allow the head coach to distance himself from the personnel despite the fact he was in on every decision he cut the roster and told you that this was the best team that he had had here which we all knew was utter nonsense the guy in the last room in the upper deck knew it was utter 
Nonsense. And Rex has been trying at every one of these press conferences. If you ever watch those guys on SNY who I love watching, and then you watch these Rex press conferences, they're must-watch because they are folly, and they've become a standing joke. As he stands there and tries to tell you things you know are not true. Oh, you know, we would have played Tebow, but he had broken ribs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They took Tebow and tried to ruin his career. And Tebow luckily gets out of here, hopefully with his character in place. Because you know what? Tebow's too good a person to be over there in that slime. And that's what that is. The Jets are a sewer. And they, you know, that's where he's too good a person to be involved in that. He should get himself away from it as fast as he possibly can. And tell Jimmy Sexton, you know what? You let, you, you let me buy into this. And I did it for all the wrong reasons, fame, fortune, what New York was going to bring me. And hopefully I can resurrect what's left in my career after being there for a year and listening to this garbage. And you know what? Mr. T made a lot of mistakes. And he bought into the wreck stuff and started acting the same way, like they were tougher and smarter than everybody else. And they had a little success and they tried to build on that. And frankly, it was a house of cards and it all fell apart. And if he if he bit if he, if he got it for what happened here, you know what that that's part of this league. But the amazing thing is that Rex didn't, because he had his hand in every single thing, and what went on there Monday just shows you just how low it can get with the Jets. They ran and hid and made Mr. T take the entire fall for Woody Johnson. For Rex Ryan. And you know what? Give Tannenbaum credit. He stood up there. He met with the players. He met with the media. He answered the questions. And he left with some integrity. All right. He took a beating. But he went out like a man. He didn't go and hide somewhere like Rex Ryan did. What a disgrace. Back after this. 